Hello everyone, this is Dr. Lahari and back with radiographic interpretation made easy. This is case 11 and here I'm going to discuss something different. Um, we are going to discuss here the application of tube shift technique also called as the SLOB technique which is the um, same lingual opposite buckle technique. So let me tell you uh, more details about this. Um, like any uh, steps, any other radiograph, for the steps in radiographic interpretation would include to first of all identify the radiograph taken, normal anatomical landmarks, radiographic faults, tooth or teeth of interest, and then coming down to eat each individual tooth, and the crown, root, height of alveolar crest, periodontal ligament space, lamina dura, alveolar bone proper, and uh, radiographic diagnosis followed by finally the differential diagnosis if applicable. So today we have uh, the radiograph taken that is shown here is the intraoral periapical radiograph of maxillary anterior uh, region. You have two radiographs here A and B. Clearly both are showing the same region but uh, radiograph B is different from radiograph A and the difference is because it's taken with a tube shift. I'll tell you more about it. Now, um, the indications for why this has been done is to have a better visualization from a different angle. And uh, these are taken with normal uh, peripical films. And can this be done with, uh, uh, I mean, can I do the same with uh, digital sensor? Of course, yes, it can be done. Right. So, uh, moving on. Tube, tube shift technique is when you actually take two radiographs of the same region one after the other placing the film with in the same area film or sensor in the same area uh, same location but point of entry of the tube or x-ray source would be shifted more distally in the second um, image right so it could also be shifted mesially depends on what we want to actually see so while uh, from this radiograph we see here for a normal uh, maxillary incisor area you would want to have the point of entry at the midline and the, through the center of the nose um, about 45 degrees positive angulation and when you do a shift technique, we take another radiograph, place the film in the same location, keeping in mind the same teeth and the landmarks as far as possible. Uh, keep the image receptor, that is the film or the sensor in the same location, yet the point of entry would be slightly shifted distally. So that would ensure that you're looking at the tooth from a different angle, which is why even though the central incisor looks almost the same, the one one, the two one definitely looks different. Right, so let's see what that difference is. Now, <clears throat> teeth seen, if you observe closely, is 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, and 2, 2, which is about the same in the second image, that is image B, 1, 2, 1, 1, 2, 1, and 2, 2. The faults that we see here in image A is slight elongation of the um, radiograph, I mean, elongation of the image, which could have happened because of uh, um, issues with angulation. And the uh, fault that has happened with image B is the distal part of the film is looks kind of blurred, which could be probably because of bending of the film. Then this fault generally will not occur on a sensor. So, let's identify the normal anatomical landmarks. Now, ideally it should be the same on image A and B because they are representing the same area. But since we have uh, shifted the tube a bit, you will definitely tend to see different landmarks. Especially because it's a maxillary anterior region which has a lot of, lot of uh, overlapping landmarks in that area. So let's see what they are. First of all is the intermaxillary suture. Uh, that's the area where you see in between the more, uh, teeth, in between the incisors. Okay, can also be identified in image B, but uh, in the in between the incisors. Next is the incisor foramen or the incisor fossa area, right where you have the uh, canals. So it's kind of shifted because of the shift in the image in image B. Next is anterior nasal spine, which you can see as a diamond shaped area in, uh, in A, whereas in B, it is kind of blurred. I don't really see it very clearly. 
lateral fossa which is like a radiolucent area of less density the bone is less dense in between the central and the lateral incisor area followed by the floor of the nasal cavity very clearly seen in image B which is a radio opaque line depicting the uh, nasal cavity and an interesting thing that you can see in image B because of shift in angulation it looks like you can see the floor of the maxillary sinus the reason for this is you're projecting more of the canine and hence the maxillary sinus floor on the opposite side is uh, visible lastly is the shadow of the nose which can be seen on uh, image A and uh, not so clearly on image B right so uh, coming to the tooth of interest which is uh, uh, evidently 2-1 we can see that there is uh, a lot happening in the middle of the root uh, there what do we see the crown shows us well-defined radiolucency involving the enamel dentine and pulp and there's also radiolucent radio opaque pin a pin which you're seeing here that's ge generally done for retentive purposes there are also radio opacity seen uh, on the uh, crown indicative of some uh, restorative material right in the root there's a lot happening here uh, it just looks like it's a root canal filled tooth with radio opaque gutta percha uh, but this gutta percha appears discontinuous you can see it um, you know regularly somewhere in uh, around the middle third of the uh, root there is an irregular line visible which is suggestive of an oblique root fracture right that area that's what we are talking about you see discontinuity of the gutta percha there and an oblique root fracture uh, a lot of mess happening around there it can be easily confused uh, the students who are looking at it for the first time might actually think what happened to that area I'm not it's not very clear but you would not really suspect that it's a fracture unless you have the second image which proves that there is a fracture line there right moving on let's look at the height of alveolar crest um, by and large it appears to be normal and when we move on to the PDL and lamina dura again it can be a little confusing because we're looking at a fracture area so there is distress and hence there is fracture uh, the fracture is extending onto the root so there is disturbance of uh, lamina dura and PDL definitely uh, there is widening and loss in the middle one third of the root which is uh, again suggestive of a recent trauma because it looks discontinuous in that particular area uh, the alveolar bone proper uh, uh, by and large appears normal again which reconfirms that probably this is recent trauma but definitely the uh, radiographic diagnosis which we need to arrive at is that 2-1 is having an oblique root fracture had the tooth been uh, radiographed after a couple of days then you would definitely see uh, more radio opacity or radiolucency at the apex of the tooth indicating that there is uh, uh, some amount of activity happening in the bone but this radiograph must have been taken immediately after fracture or in an acute phase that's the reason why we don't see much of uh, changes in the apex of the tooth but then the definite oblique uh, fracture which is evident now we're not discussing the clinical features of this patient uh, so probably the patient might be in pain because of trauma to the adjacent tissues but otherwise it's a, a fairly well uh, treated root canal treated tooth so tooth itself may not be painful right so that's it from me right now please write to me if you have any doubts or if you want me to specifically discuss any radiograph that could interest you thank you and stay safe